All right, we'll come in. I'm going to attach my 8-dot thread at about the midpoint of the hook shank here. As I move through the back half of this pattern, my index point that I want to pay attention to is that hook point. I want the majority of this abdomen material to take place at or behind that hook point. So I'll tilt this a little bit so you can see it. This is a piece of micro stretch tubing. The color combo that we're doing for this one is purple. So I'm going to stick that in there. I'm going to catch it with the tip of my bobbin. I'm going to walk that back all the way down to where I'm about parallel with the eye of the hook. And then I'm just going to lay down some nice side-by-side -side wraps. And come back to a point just, just a skosh bit right behind the point. So at that right there, I'm going to let my head, my head, excuse me, not my head, my thread. Let my thread hang there and I'm going to bring in a piece of ostrich trail. I'm going to catch it by a tip. Right back over it. About eighth of an inch behind the hook point there. And then return that thread. And I'm just going to put some relaxed wraps to kind of let it hang out of the way over here. So very simply, I'm going to take that ostrich trail. And I'm going to wrap that forward until I get up to or slightly past the hook point. And then once I get right into that location, just back those extra wraps right off. Secure that with a couple wraps and clip off the excess. I like to always get at least two solid wraps down over the top of that hurl. Can be a little brittle. So again, I'm going to lay those wraps over here out of the way. And then I'm going to grab this stretch tubing. I'm just going to bring this forward. I'm just laying down side by side wraps on the bottom here. Once I start to get close to that hurl, I'm going to have to wiggle this side to side. And what that's going to do is it's very simply just going to bring that through and allow some of those fibers to stick out. So I get my wiggle going here. You're going to trap some of them, but you'll leave most of them free. I'm going to pull that up, moisten my fingers, and just brush back those hurl fibers. And then I'm going to back these thread wraps off right there. And right about just above the hook point, I'll lock this down and tie it off. Come back over it one more time. Snip off the excess. At this point, I'm going to bring in what's going to be my post material. And this is just that hairline pair of post. This is in a done, a gray done. So the tips are clipped off fairly evenly or close to it. I'm going to bring my thread forward but not all the way to the eye of the hook. And the reason for that is that I'm going to take this and I'm going to take a loose wrap over the top of this. And that's going to allow me to slide this material back to where most of it's nice and behind the hook eye. And then very simply at that point, then I can lock it down and trap it. Once I have that secured for the most part, I'm going to bring in my Grizzly Hackle. And this is oversized by one hook size. Uh, I'm going to tie this in on the far side of the hook shank, making sure that I have a little bit of bare stem to start with when I start to make that wrap against the post there. So I'm going to secure that, secure that stem. And I'm going to lift this up. I want to wrap back, like I said, until I'm right at or above that hook point, keeping that index point in mind. So I've got that secured. I'm going to use a little different technique here uh, to kind of lay this down. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the post. I'm going to just hold it in my hand. Um, I leave this material a little bit longer so that this is a little bit easier for me to manage. And I'm looking to take about six wraps up the post and then six wraps back down. And I'll secure this in front of it uh, in a, a typical post securing position, I guess you could say. It's going to end up like a hackle stacker. We're going to end up pulling this over the top of the pattern. So I'm just going to pass this from finger to finger. You could use a, a parachute holder if you have one of those on your vise. Uh, I think it's easy enough just to hold it in my hands if, if you leave the material long enough. If you leave yourself short here, you kind of put yourself in a tough position. So a little long on the hackle, a little long on the pair post. I'm going to start wiggling these down right back through those same hackle wraps. So it's going to be pretty thick and stacked up. Once again, we're looking for about six up, six down. 
When I get to that point, I'm going to hold this out over the hook shank. I'm going to use my left hand very simply just to brush those fibers back. Stick the nose of my bobbin right in here. Catch this with a wrap or two. And then I'm going to come in with my scissors. Lift up those fibers in the front and snip those off. Stick the nose in just for safety's sake. We really want to lock this down so it doesn't fly away on us. I'm going to take that, throw down some extra wraps. So right now we're going to let that just hang back there. I'm going to bring in this, uh, this is a River Roads Creation. It's a thin little one millimeter. It's a transparent foam. It's got the black speckles on it. it gives us a really nice kind of winged impression. I'm going to take that. Snip the front of that to a nice little taper. Take that thread back closer to the eye of the hook. I'm going to put the nose of that material in there. Brush those hackle fibers back. Catch that with a few wraps. And then once I have it secured, I'm going to wrap back to that same point and just kind of tuck it in here. Right up underneath the hackle. So when I get to that, I'm not going to worry about compressing that foam because I'm going to go back over the top boot with my dubbing here in a second. I'll take this loon swax, add just a little bit of tack to the thread. I'll bring in some purple UV ice dub here. And I'm not looking to build up a huge dubbing rope. It's a dry fly, obviously. So I just want sparse little fibers off the edges. Just want a little bit of reflectivity. A little bit of purple worked in there. So I have that dubbing rope built up. I'm going to start right back here at the butt end. Wrap forward. Nice snug pressure. So we get right up behind the eye of the hook. I want to stop right about there with the dubbing. I want that little bit of space to kind of work in and tie off materials. If I look at the bottom side just to double check. I'm covered all the way back to my tie-in point. I don't have any exposed foam. The one thing that makes it a little easier on this pattern too is I'm just going to pause for a second. I'm going to tilt this hook up, change its position in the vise a little bit, and that just makes it easier to finish off. I'm simply going to pull that foam forward now. And I'm not going to pull it too snug. I'm going to let it expand a little bit, kind of spread out to the sides. I want that uh, view from the underside catch a little bit of that. So I'm going to catch it with a wrap or two. I'm going to leave it long still. And now I'm going to come over and I'm going to pull. I can pull pretty hard. I can put a good amount of pressure uh, on that post material. To get this snug down initially without trapping too many hackle fibers, I'm going to bring my thread and nose my bobbin in here. Simply work it out and around the tips of those hackles and give it a nice snug tug at the bottom. And I'm going to do that one more time. And then I'll really lock it down around the eye of the hook. Just kind of wiggle it around the hackle, wiggle it around the hackle, let it hang, snug it down. Now I'm going to take my fingers, I'm just going to pull these fibers back, stick the nose of my bobbin in there. I'm going to get a wrap or two over that post material, bring the foam up. I'm going to take a wrap or two around the eye of the hook to lock everything in place. And then once I have the foam pulled back, just stick the nose of my bobbin in here. And this stuff will squish, so this is pretty easy to catch. I want to get a couple wraps so I get just this little butt of a head right in here. Get that with a few wraps of thread. Once again, anchor it around the eye of the hook. And then we can come in at this point. And I guess my easy gauge for this is I usually snip this at about the same height as the length of the hook shank. So similar height as far as the shank goes. I'm going to come in, snip that off. And then come in and whip finish that by hand. And then I'm going to bring in uh, a little bit of this Deer Creek Fine Flex. And I just have an old brush on my table. And I'm going to take it and I'm very simply just going to brush it right over the front of that little sail. That's just going to add to the durability of it. It doesn't add a lot of weight. Um, that stuff is a little flimsy on its own. But when I come in and add this little bit of a clear coat really amps up the durability of it. I'm a big durability stickler.